Over the past two weeks, Bahrain has launched a series of measures to crack down on its main Shia opposition bloc, Al Wafaq. The government has indefinitely suspended al wafaq doubled the prison sentence on the group's leader, Sheikh Ali Salman, detained a high-profile human rights activist, Nabil Rajab, and then the real kicker came this week when the government revoked the citizenship of well-known Shia cleric Ayatollah Issa Qasim. Now why does this matter? For any power interested in dominating the Persian Gulf, like Iran, there are a few essential ingredients. The obvious one is the Strait of Hormuz, a critical choke point through which some 40% of the world's tanker traffic passes through each day. Iran already, of course, controls the strait, but if it could also lay claim to the island of Bahrain nestled between the Arabian and Qatari peninsulas, as well as the oases of Al Khatif in Al Hassa and the modern day eastern province of Saudi Arabia, then Iran would be in control of three economic hubs along a very critical global trade route. Not surprisingly, throughout history, Sunni and Shia leaders have jostled over Bahrain and the Arabian Peninsula's eastern provinces. Now, where we've ended up today is a situation where Shia majorities reside in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia's eastern provinces, yet are ruled by Sunni monarchies. Iran would thus love to redraw the balance of power in eastern Arabia in favor of the Shia. So, the Sunni Gulf powers are naturally very wary of any attempts by Iran to stoke unrest in their kingdoms. This is why Saudi was very quick to militarily intervene in Bahrain in 2011 to put down a mass Shia uprising. Nonetheless, Shia dissent has persisted over the past five years, and the Bahraini government is more inclined to use an iron fist than accommodate the opposition to deal with its opponents. So over the past couple years, Bahraini authorities have made a point of broadcasting plots they've uncovered that allegedly link back to Iran's IRGC. And in some cases, attacks in Bahrain have shown a higher degree of sophistication, worrying Bahrain and its Saudi sponsors that Iran could pose a more serious threat within their borders. Saudi Arabia and other Gulf members have stood in solidarity behind Bahrain's crackdown, though they know that there is a risk of inviting more meddling by Iran. This will therefore be a very critical case study of Iran's covert reach. But Iran is not without its own vulnerabilities either. We've been tracking an uptick in low-level attacks in Iran in recent weeks, and the geographic scope of the attacks is quite wide, from Kurdish militant activity and arrests of Sunni extremists in the northwest, to attacks by Havazi Arab rebels in the southwest, to Balochi separatist activity in the southeast. So just as the Gulf Sunni states will be alert to any signs of Iranian meddling, Iran also has growing reason to suspect its Sunni adversaries of exploiting Iran's internal tremors.